I currently have a circuit board that is used in many brands of inverter air conditioners. The issue I'm facing right now is with the third light, LED, on this circuit board, which is turning on. If we look at it, the LEDs 1, 2, and 3 are all lit up. However, after waiting for a while, it should either show a communication error or the actual fault should appear. If it shows a communication error, we won't be able to trace the next fault without the indoor unit. But if it directly shows the fault, we'll know exactly what the issue is. When the third LED in this PCB turns on directly, it indicates an F7 fault. Currently, I only have the outdoor unit and I haven't attached the indoor unit. Sometimes, it will only give an E5 or F7 error when it's attached to the indoor unit and tries to function, which then triggers the F7 error. However, sometimes the fault is permanent and appears directly in the system, allowing us to identify that the PCB is showing an F7 error quickly. Now let's discuss what this fault is. The F7 fault, according to the company, indicates overvoltage or undervoltage protection. What does this mean? It happens when the electricity supply is fluctuating. The voltage may go up and down. The company has built this protection into the system. If the voltage is too high, there are three places where this protection exists. If the voltage is too high, the ZNR will blast first. If the ZNR doesn't blast for some reason, there is a whole circuit designed to detect whether the electricity is too high or too low. This protection applies to DC electricity when it is converted from AC, ensuring that the system functions properly. Similarly, AC voltage is also controlled so that the microcontroller knows that all voltages in the PCB are proper. I will now turn off this PCB. This PCB is another one. These two PCBs are slightly different from each other, and I'll explain the difference and why this fault is occurring. This circuit board only supports AC motors and does not have a function for DC motors, so its design is a bit different from this PCB. If you look at this PCB, you'll see a heatsink here, and a fan IPM module is installed to operate the DC blower motor. Because of this, the design of this PCB will be slightly different. Sometimes, due to this change, it becomes confusing because even though an F7 fault appears, the PCB itself is different. That's why I thought I should make a video on this as well, to help anyone facing difficulties with it. First of all, we will discharge the capacitors on this circuit. They have been discharged. Now, this PCB with a DC motor has a slightly different design. To check the AC voltages on this PCB, there is a specific circuit. You can see here three resistors labeled R70, R72, and R73. Additionally, you can see resistors R69, R71, and R74. These three resistors, R73, 72, and R70, are connected in series, and similarly, R69, R71, and R74 are also connected in series. You can check their values here. The value of each of these resistors is 4,703 and three resistors are connected in series. From here, the circuit continues to these capacitors. You can also see two more resistors connected here. Let's check their values. These are one kilo ohm resistors. After that, there is a capacitor and then two diodes are connected here. From here, the voltages continue into the system and enter this operational amplifier IC. The output from its pin seven is sent to the microcontroller, allowing the microcontroller to determine whether the AC voltages are functioning correctly. I've also made another video where I explained what the circuit looks like after this operational amplifier IC. Now, let me explain the DC circuit using another circuit board where I have removed the components, making it easier to understand. Here, a bridge rectifier is installed. When the voltage is converted to DC, this side is the positive side, and this print is the negative side. You can see they are connected. Here, a resistor is installed, known as a shunt resistor. You can see two points here. One comes directly from the bridge rectifier and the other wire goes past the shunt resistor. After the voltage passes through the shunt resistor, it crosses over and then two wires measure whether the DC voltages are proper or not. These lines are specifically designed to check the negative voltages. As we move forward, you can see that these wires loop around and reach this point. From here, they connect to these resistors. You can see two resistors here, each with a value of one kilo ohm resistor 76 and resistor 75. From one side of these resistors, which is connected to the IGBT emitter, the circuit loops around and we get an output from pin seven of IC1. This way, the voltage output is received from pin one of this operational amplifier, allowing the microcontroller to determine that the DC negative point is functioning correctly without any issues. Similarly, the positive point is also tested and its measurements are sent to the microcontroller. However, there is a slight difference between this circuit board 
and the circuit board with the DC motor. Just like the negative point, the positive point also starts from here. This point here, let me show you, is where a capacitor is installed. The capacitor is connected here with the positive side of the capacitor on this side. Let me rotate it and show you from the other side. As I turn it, you can see that the positive side of the capacitor is connected here. On this side, there are resistors connected. These are 91 kilo ohm resistors, and all these resistors are connected in series. There are nine resistors in total connected in series, and from here they move further into the system. It moves further at this point. This point here is connected to the resistor number 45, and then as we move along, it connects under this resistor to resistor number 46. From there, it loops around and goes to the microcontroller. This is how the function is completed. However, there is a slight difference in the DC motor circuit board. The difference is that since the IPM for the DC motor is added here, the function has been made very simple. I'll show you how. First, we will check it with a multimeter, setting it to continuity mode, and ensure the multimeter is working correctly. Now, if we look at the resistor 52, it has a value of 560 kilo ohms. I will check it, and I'll set the multimeter to ohms mode to verify its value. When I measure it here, you can see that it shows 10 mega ohms, approximately 9.9 .9 mega ohms. In the previous circuit board, as you saw, there were six resistors of 91 kilo ohms each and three resistors of 10 kilo ohms each, which added up to almost the same value. Here, however, a single resistor is used in the system to simplify the process, making it more efficient. Next, the circuit continues forward. I'll connect the multimeter probes to the resistor. I will set the multimeter to continuity mode then it will indicate that the point is fine. The multimeter is beeping, meaning this point is okay. Now I'll connect the red probe at the same spot and I'll show you where it leads. When I check this point at resistor 45, you can see the system is working fine. I will now check here. The print is connected fine. I'll confirm this by checking the print connection with resistor 46. Yes, it is connected here. After this, it goes to the microcontroller. The resistance we checked earlier showed a value between 9 and 20 mega ohms. Is this value incorrect? Yes, it is incorrect because the proper value should be 560 kilo ohms. This happens sometimes when resistors are connected with capacitors or diodes. Their values can change, leading to incorrect readings on the multimeter. The correct method is to remove the resistor from the system and then check it to get the proper value. However, right now the resistor is functioning fine. If a fault occurs in the AC electric protection circuit, the F7 error will still appear. Similarly, if there's an issue on the DC side, particularly on the positive side, the F7 error will also appear. However, if the issue is on the negative side, the F7 error will not appear. Instead, it will trigger the F1 error. The positive side of the circuit has now been made very simple. Resistor R45, which is supposed to be a 5.1 kilo ohm resistor, is currently showing around 4.66 kilo ohms, a value you consider acceptable. However, resistor R46, which should be 2 kilo ohms, is displaying a much higher value of 17.18 mega ohms, indicating a likely fault. But here, it's not just this fault, there's another fault as well. When measuring the AC voltages, we check resistor number 87. Let's check it too, because it passes through this operational amplifier's output via resistor 87. I'll show you its value. This resistor also shows a reading of 1 mega ohm, whereas its original value is 500 ohms. Now, I'll remove these resistors from the circuit and check them again to see if their value has changed. Now, this resistor is showing 500 ohms. Similarly, let's check the other resistor, which is showing a value of 2.2 kilo ohms. This means our system is now working properly, but testing is still pending because without testing, we can't confirm whether it's fixed or not. So now, I'll power up this PCB and test it. I've turned on the electricity and all three lights have come on and two lights have started blinking. Now there's a different error showing up. I'll check it, and I think the F1 error is present in this system. I'll check the voltages. I'll take the ground from this voltage regulator and then place the probe here. I'm getting approximately 2.7 volts at resistor number 46. Similarly, let's check what output we're getting from resistor number 87. Here, I'm also getting 2.5 volts. So, if we check the voltage at this pin of the operational amplifier, we're also getting 2.5 volts here, which is perfectly fine. Now, let's check the voltage at resistor number 84. We're getting 2.7 volts here, 
and these voltages are also correct. This means that the voltages on IC number 4, which is the operational amplifier, are completely fine. Now I'll check the voltages on IC number 1. So let's check the voltage on pin 1. Here it's showing 2.4 volts, and these voltages are fine as well. Now on this same IC, let's check the top pin, which is pin 7, to see the output. Here, we're getting 5 volts, which means it's okay. So you can see that the voltages for the operational amplifier are completely fine. However, we're still getting the F1 error because LED numbers 1 and 2 are continuously blinking. And after that, it's showing a communication error. So for this, we'll recheck the points on the circuit board without powering it up. We'll check it in ohms mode. I've already found the fault, so I'll show it to you directly. But before explaining the actual fault, let me tell you what's causing this fault. As I mentioned earlier, the output from IC4's pin number 1 goes towards the microcontroller. The resistor connected to it, which is resistor 84, is a 7.5 kilo ohm resistor. If we look at this point, pin 1 connects here, and from here, the print runs to this point. Let me show you in continuity mode. The multimeter is set to continuity mode, and the output is coming here. There's a 510 ohm resistor connected, and from here, the print goes to the capacitor, and then to the microcontroller. Now let's check resistor number 60. When I place the probes on the resistor, you can see that it's showing a value of 15 mega ohms, which means this resistor is also faulty in this circuit. So I'll remove this resistor from the circuit board as well. Now I'll power up the circuit board. The blinking lights will immediately tell us if there's still a problem. As you can see, the system is now completely okay. The lights have turned off. After a short while, it will show a serial communication error. Other than that, there are no other errors in the system. It has been a while now, and no other errors or blinking lights have appeared, so further testing isn't necessary because we can already see that the system is now working fine. Only LED1 has started blinking which means that when two lights are stable and LED1 is blinking, it's a serial communication error. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos and subscribe. Thank you.